Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and I've been missing for about a year. I don't have an excuse. Um, life got in the way and I wanted to just come on here and say I'm back and I'll be having um, some kind of upload schedule to YouTube. Um, please excuse my dog. This is a very laid back video and excuse me. Hey, don't do that. People are watching you. Let's rewind to March of 2020. That is when we were hit with this global pandemic called Corona, COVID-19. Auntie Rona's, she's here, she's here to stay, and it's a big adjustment. Especially for a lot of us who've never experienced a pandemic or experienced anything like this, it is hard. It's hard to adjust to. So, back in March, I was working at a nursing home. I was a social service assistant. I have my bachelor's degree in health administration. I have a background in working with high risk youth and with the elderly on a social standpoint, meaning I help them get resources, help them with their psychosocial needs. I also am a permanent makeup artist. I specialize in powder ombre eyebrows. I was doing that for almost a year. I was doing that and in April I would have made one year of doing eyebrows. However, with the shutdown of the state of Hawaii, we went into lockdown mode. Not a lot of people were working. A lot of people were struggling with unemployment. I was struggling at my full-time job as a social service assistant working in a nursing home rehab facility with patients who may or may have been in contact with people with COVID. We were the first nursing home to test positive for COVID-19. It was scary. Everybody at the salon was scared for me. You know, it was just a lot. Mentally, it was a lot. And I know a lot of people were going through this just as well as I am because like nobody, you don't know what prepares you for a global pandemic. No one prepares you for a lot of things. So one thing that affected me back in March was my hours got cut at work. I wasn't able to tattoo, so of course I, I lost a lot of income. Um, so I was just like trying to apply for unemployment, got disqualified, made too much still. Even with cut hours, I made too much. And then after about a three month shutdown, we were able to go back to tattooing in June. From March to June, I hated life. From March to June, my mental like capacity was like overworked, overwhelmed, always crying, I always came home crying and I was frustrated. I was frustrated because I didn't know what to do with myself. Um, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can at work and give my 110%, but also at the back of my mind, there's just this like little, you know, person on my shoulder telling me like, you got bills to pay, how are you gonna eat? How are you gonna pay your rent? Like, what's going on? I decided, like, I took a step back, I started realizing that this is not what I wanna do for the rest of my life. Yes, I got a college degree, but I was never happy to the point where I was like, yes, I'm excited to go to work. I had a conversation with myself because I have those a lot. I sat back and while I was not being able to do any permanent makeup, I was just like, damn, I miss doing makeup. I miss making people feel beautiful. I miss making people feel confident. And it was just hard on me. So I decided, you know what? you're going back to school. You're gonna go back to school for your aesthetic license because yes, you can do permanent makeup and you have a tattoo license, but you can do so much more with the knowledge you know from your previous experiences and whatever you learn and expand on your services. So I was like, okay, have this conversation. Had it with my boyfriend, supported. Had it with my sister, she supported it. And my brother-in-law, they supported it. And then if you know my mom, if you met my mom, if you ever hear about my mom, you know, she's typical Filipino, like, what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna get money? Who's gonna pay for your bills? My mom saw that I was very unhappy at this job. I don't live with my mom, I live with my sister and my brother-in-law, and I like would go to my mom's house and I would cry and I would tell her, like, I hate this job. I hate feeling like I'm not doing anything. I hate feeling like a slave. And she was like, so go back to Sephora. And I thought about it, I was like, she told me to go back to Sephora. And I was like, okay, hey mom, I wanna go back to school to become an esthetician. What is an esthetician, what do they do? And I explained it to her and she was like, then do it. And I, and I was like, I want your blessing and I also want your help. And this is where I was starting to do a lot of research on the type of aesthetic schools here in Hawaii. I went on tours um, and I you know, decided, I really did my research and I thought about where am I gonna go? Where am I gonna get the best education? I wanted to find my passion again for beauty and I wanted to expand on my services, not only just permanent makeup, and I also just wanted to feel beautiful and confident within myself, knowing that I made the right choice. So, 
June 19th was my last day at the nursing home. July 1st was my first day at school. I quit my full-time job during a global pandemic. I can't believe I made it this far. I quit my job and I enrolled in aesthetic school. A lot of people had questions on what school I went to and why I chose that school specifically. So I enlisted at Makana Wellness Academy here in Honolulu. There are other schools here in Hawaii. I've also toured another school. I toured the Skin Institute and it just didn't give me the same vibes as Makana. It's very spa-like. It's very bright and flashy and it wasn't for me. Um, it's a nice school, don't get me wrong, I'm pretty sure we all follow the same protocols when it comes to education, you know, you need to do your 600 hours. So first thing I want to go over is choosing a school. Now, what made me choose the school I went to versus the others is uh, tuition, the length of course, as well as, you know, the, the tour that I did. So there are three that I looked up. There was Makana Academy, there was the Skin Institute, and then there is the Honolulu Nails and Aesthetics Academy. Um, I only was able to tour Makana and TSI, which is the Skin Institute. Um, one thing I recommend to everybody is one, to do your research. Do your research on what you like, what fits your schedule, what's your budget. Do that research first and then go on tours and then you make your decision off of that. One thing that I really appreciated about Makana was the home-like feeling. It was very family oriented, it was very loving and caring and it was a lot, it was very much so like you were gonna make you successful, we're gonna set you up for success and you're gonna go on. So that's one of the reasons why I chose Makana. The vibe was just different from the other school I toured. In a sense where it made me feel comfortable um, being a local girl I was able to relate more to the owner who is a local girl as well. She found the need that there was not a lot of options for beauty schools here. Another choosing factor for me when it came to finding the right school was the price. Was the tuition affordable? One thing that drew me to Makana was the fact that it was accredited, one, and they offered financial aid. A lot of these trade schools or not traditional schools, they don't offer financial aid, it's a lot of out-of-pocket. So with Makana, they offered financial aid and I was able to get some type of assistance. And then on top of that, what made me draw more to them was the fact that their school is accredited by the Commission on Massage Therapy Accreditation. Basically, the curriculum is accredited, meaning that there are certain competencies that the school must hit in order to, you know, receive the accreditation. So after doing my research and comparing the cost of tuition, comparing their websites and what they offer, I know um, the Skin Institute and Honolulu Nail Aesthetics Academy, um, they have their own curriculum, but I pretty sure we follow the same Milady standard. Another thing that I took into account when choosing a school was one, the distance, parking, and time of classes. Ideally, I would have preferred part-time. However, um, Makana did not have a part-time schedule, so I just stuck it out with a full-time schedule. Went to school from 9 to 4 every day. Going to school during a global pandemic was very different for me. You know, I'm so used to tr traditional school. Go to school, make up your work, all that kind of stuff. Whereas here, we had to do both like, sometimes we had to do hybrid stuff, sometimes we had to do stuff online, sometimes we had to do stuff in school, sometimes we had to do things like um, at home. The schools are learning how to adjust to this as well. And us as students also needed to learn how to adjust to that. But that also took into account was the distance, how far I was driving to school, the parking, and the time of classes. Those are some things that I recommend looking into, especially if you are really considering going back to school, of how far you have to drive in the morning and back home, um, how much parking is, and the time of classes. If you have a family and you can't do a full time, if there are schools that offer a part time class, then you know by all means. The next thing I'm going to cover is tuition costs. So I believe Makana's tuition is about 12 grand. And with financial aid, a portion of that was taken care of for me. And of course, with my mom's assistance, she was able to help me pay for the rest of my tuition out of pocket. However, some of the other schools offer scholarships. Um, I know they offer scholarships if you do like some kind of essay. They also offer scholarships for Native Hawaiians. And then I know um, they also offer scholarships for people in the military. So they do have the GI Bill. With my tuition, my books were covered, my supplies were covered. We do get a small student kit. We had a lot of 
cosmeceutical high-end products that we use not only on each other on clients so I know other schools gave you like bottles of things however our supplies was being able to use those products at school. So moving on to the course of study, it is a 600 hour course, um, about 19 weeks. We finished in about four months. Some people graduated earlier, some people graduated late. Um, it just all depends on if you miss school and you need to make up hours. The course is broken up into three sections. So there is intro, which is your theory and lectures, a lot of book work. Practical was when we were able to work on each other. And one thing that I liked about practical setting was that in order to perform, you had to receive. And I thought that was a great rule because we can't just perform. You want to be able to receive a treatment to understand what's going on so that you know how to make your clients feel comfortable when you are working on them especially like during waxing um, Brazilian waxing we all had to work on each other meaning yes we got very intimate however it was more so reassuring to have the group of people that you're with to learn with each other by doing that you get to expand your knowledge on working with different type of skin different type of hair different type of lifestyles different type of skin tones age range Fitzpatrick level all of that stuff so in our clinical stage we were able to take clients however with the shutdown we were only able to take friends and family at one point and then when the state went into tier 2 meaning personal services was allowed we then was able to take um, outside clients. I basically put my life on hold to attend school for four months. I told myself this is gonna be the fastest four months of your life and it was. It was the fastest four months of my life when I experienced with school. It was very stressful, I'm not gonna lie, especially with the financial aspect because I did leave my full-time job and at one point I wasn't able to tattoo it was a little bit difficult for me to work around that schedule at one point again I was doing MLM I was you know selling shampoo and then at one point I was selling tacos wanted to make some sort of income in the situation the state shut down again I didn't have the support from my mom my sister my brother-in-law my boyfriend and my friends I don't think I would have like been able to get through school especially too with the girls at school um, you know my SD sisters they were like always pushing me we were pushing each other we were making sure everybody was straight you know texting each other about answers and understanding theory it was it was a lot during a pandemic I'm not gonna lie I had one breakdown okay and that's something that everybody should be proud of because I have breakdowns a lot but I had one breakdown in school and it was because I was like worried we were gonna get shut down again and I had no control and I had to leave school and anxiety my anxiety was really really high and I think it was for a lot of people during a pandemic but I was able to push through it and I was able to to just get over my fear and just finish school one thing that I learned about myself in school was that I didn't know everything and this is just me talking from my experience is that like when I was at Sephora I thought I knew everything about skin I thought I knew everything about makeup I didn't and I you know I'm humbling myself now that I'm glad I got to work that experience at Sephora however going to school made me realize like oh there are, there is reasons why things happen there are also things that we can't control one thing that I really appreciate about school was that I was able to learn the reason why certain things happen and I also learned how to prevent things from happening for example if a client had inflamed skin how can you tell it was inflammation or they're really just truly irritated like I learned how to troubleshoot a lot of things in school and it's something you just can't learn you know from just like YouTube really learning sitting down and understanding the theory behind things made me realize like you don't know everything Jan and and that's okay that is definitely okay if you don't know everything however being able to put that mindset behind me and I was like okay, I want to learn I'm gonna learn everything so that I know how to better practice in the future when I do become a esthetician that I was able to understand ingredients I was able to understand why things work a certain way I was able to understand how skin reacts to certain things um, and not just on a surface level but more deeper more like from the root if that made any sense one thing I liked about Makana was that they set you up for success when it comes to after graduation they make sure that you have all the right paperwork that you need to take to the DCCA to make sure you apply for your licensing exam and if you need your permit one thing that I do want to leave this video off of if you do find your passion in something else my main 
piece of advice is to follow your passion but do it with a plan now you hear a lot of these um, success stories of people like quitting their job and traveling and doing all these things but it's like do it with a plan I made sure I had a plan and a backup plan to my plan if things fell short the only way you get successful and reach your goals is if you set yourself up for success I made sure that when I quit my job I had a backup plan and a backup plan to my backup plan I made sure I surrounded myself with the right support system and I made sure that I put my like big girl head and panties on and made sure I was focused not on just like graduating but learning and understanding and retaining all the information I learned from school now that I'm graduated and studying for my state exam um, you know I take about an hour of my day just to read over my notes read over my book and just open up the small answer key test book that we got from a lady and just like read over it just so that I don't lose any of the information that I learned I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know it's a very long video but if you have questions please go ahead and leave them down below if you had any doubts about going to school or doubts about yourself being able to get through this you will get through it you will if there's a will there's a way if there's one thing 2020 taught all of us is that we found a way to survive and made things happen even with the circumstances going on in our world right now. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving and a great holiday. Please stay tuned for the upcoming videos that I have planned. Other than that, have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are in the world and stay beautiful.